Welcome to Solo Progression, the series where I play through Dungeon Defenders 1 Redux with the goal of beating the Crystalline Dimension on the hardest difficulty, as well as completing all the achievements. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Solo Progression, my series on Dungeon Defenders 1 Redux. These are the items I farmed last episode on Magus' Quarters. This is going to give us quite the boost in DPS power across the board on our towers, on our heroes. So to continue that trend, I wanted to farm a harder map, which means I have to be another map on Nightmare Hardcore. So that first map we'll be doing today is the Throne Room on Nightmare Hardcore. Essentially, the only reason why we're doing this is to unlock survival mode on this map. I'm a little worried about the boss instantly killing me because I haven't really prepped my characters for Nightmare Mode. So I only opted to use one character for the final boss on this map, which is Leon. One thing you may have noticed is that my auras are just barely big enough to cover the entire lane. And especially if they get some help from a buff beam, they'll be big enough. So I put those in each lane, and this saves me a total of 2060 U instead of using a total of 5 or stacks I'm only using 3. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter either way because the boss fight goes down pretty easily. The Deadly Striker Towers did good damage, but ultimately going in with Hero Boost plus my Seahorse led to me destroying the boss. I could have had all the characters out on the field, but I decided just to keep Leon out on the field instead. On to the next map, which is Dread Dungeon Nightmare Hardcore. Because of the low mana at the start, I opt for physical beams as in just playing as Leon to get to each lane. This way I can also get my auras up during the wave. On the second wave, I get down all my defenses, which essentially just consists of buff beams, archer minions, fireball towers, and aura stacks. One of the nice things about doing this map is that the goblin copters only spawn from one area on the map. It is the northern side, I believe, if you're looking at the map. This is nice because we already have that side covered, so I just need to be over there with the Goblin Copters whenever they spawn, and it's pretty easy to deal with. This is also kind of like a test to see what I could do on Nightmare Mode, and I was trying to see if I was able to do this, because if I could do this, I could probably do every map on Campaign. So this is kind of like the testing the waters here of the Nightmare Mode. And being this map would also open up survival as a possibility on this map, which might be worth checking out in the future, but for right now I don't think we'll be able to finish it. Another thing to note is that we always get accessories from the end of this map, so I wanted to make sure I had all four characters on the field to get the most amount of chances of getting a good accessory. I believe I actually got a few that were pretty decent for this time around, which is always nice to get that little bit of extra stats. Essentially, once we get good enough accessories, we're going to be using those to just boost our stats up, which is always nice in the long run, but for now, the ones we're getting right now aren't very good. But that's okay, because just because they aren't very good doesn't mean we can't use them, and they will still be a little bit of help for each of these harder and harder waves. That said, we've completed Dread Dungeon, so we're going to go on to our next map, which is going to be Palantir on Nightmare Hardcore, of course. So I'm not going to lie, after getting an ego boost for destroying Dread Dungeon, I decided to try the bonus map Palantir. Now, Palantir is kind of interesting. Palantir was originally a fan-created map that was picked, I believe, in a popularity contest and ended up making the game after a few updates. Which I always think is cool when games add in fan custom content to become part of the game, and this is one of those things. I love the map design. I think it's really, really cool, really unique. It actually, has a boss fight too, which is cool. But I get utterly destroyed on Wave 2 for not having enough damage to keep up with any of the health of the Ogres, and they pretty much one-shot me anyway. The first aura that spawns has up to 9 million health with only one player out. And they kill me incredibly fast as well. So I can't really deal with those guys. So pretty much I'm like, all right, well, this is pretty much out of the question. I can't do this lap yet. So I'm going to take the reality check on the side. Palantir tier will be back to you in, I don't know, like three episodes. But for now, we cannot do that. But we will move on to better things. And for better things, what's better to do than get a requirement done for all of our achievements. We're going to start doing Nightmare Hardcore for all the campaign maps. And now I'm not going to try to bore you and make you watch every single map that I do. I'm just going to show the final wave of each map and hopefully it goes by pretty fast. And so first up, starting up, is the Deeper Well. It's the Deeper Well. There's nothing going on here, guys. There is absolutely nothing going on here. It is a very easy map. Uh, we have to kind of worry about the spiders, but there's hardly any DU, hardly any MU. You have enough, you're able to beat this map. There's like a 60 enemies that spawn. It's easy. On to Foundries and Forges. Another slow map. It is slower than Deeper Well, but overall not very difficult either. There is three lanes, no wyverns, nothing really to deal with. Ogres have a bit of health, but you can just kind of all clump up the middle and you can just keep going. So on to next map. Magic Scores we're skipping, by the way, because we've already beat it. So we have Alchemical Laboratory. There is a boss of this one, but I wasn't worried about it at all because the Goblin Tinker boss from the Throne Room was a piece of cake. So this one should also be a piece of cake. And I also had extra defenses set up for... The Alchemical Laboratory boss, which is the Demon Lord, which had no issues with whatsoever. 
and out onto the next map. Next up, we have Servant's Quarters. Not really a fan of this map. It is still claustrophobic as the last time we played it. Uh, not a big fan. The ogres are also mini ogres because they don't otherwise they don't fit, which I always thought was kind of cute. And then uh, I also have DU issues on this map, which I noticed because my auras were too small, and I just placed down random towers at different truck points. I also stopped using buff beams because buff beams were just not helping me enough. Uh, it was just not worth it to have a buff beam because I just did enough damage. Anyways, on to the next map, which is the Castle Armory. Again, Castle Armory, I am strong enough to beat without any tower buff beams, so just basically plop down towers in each lane with some aura stacks. And this is the last level that we have to not have wyverns in it. So now we have to deal with goblin copters on the rest of the maps. But for the most part, easy map. Let's keep going on to Hall of Court. Hall of Court goes by pretty easily, even with the goblin copters. The reason for this is because the goblin copters kind of overlap the regular lane, so we don't have to worry too much about it. It's just nice having enough archers to be able to deal with those and just having all of our buff beams. Uh, this is where I had to start using buff beams just in case the goblin copters get too close, otherwise it will die. And then on to the throne room, which we've already beat, so we're going to skip that, and we're going to go to the next map, which is Royal Gardens. I'll be honest with you guys, Royal Gardens is probably the hardest Nightmare campaign map due to the Goblin Copters and just being a ridiculously sized map. I had more trouble with this map than any of the others on this little quick speedrun of Nightmare Hardcore. Towers are dying because I didn't have enough speed to traverse the map. Well, I couldn't get any more speed anyway, just the map's so big. The map's way too big, and it just, you don't have enough time because you have 90 seconds per round, and then you have 70 seconds, and like 50 seconds, it's ridiculous. Buff Beans could have fixed the problem, but I didn't use them, and we ended up winning. But, again, hard map because it's so big. Luckily, we don't have that problem with any of the other maps. And next up, we have the Ramparts. Ramparts is nice since there's only three choke points. We have extra DU for the Goblin Copters. I had a buff beam with Deadly Striker Towers and Archers and make quick work of them. Pretty easy map. Uh, also, some of them go right through the... Some of them being the Goblin Copters go right through the Aura Stacks, which makes them super easy targets to just pick off and have our defenses attack them or just have myself as Leon attack them. Overall, easy map. Ramparts is probably the easiest of the four maps. Uh, maybe not. Endless Spires is pretty easy, too. But up next, we do have Endless Spires. So, on Endless Spires again, we also have three choke points, and we have the extra DU for Goblin Copters. I set down a buff beam right in the middle for Deadly Strike Towers pointing in both directions, and also some archers that help with the spiders and as well as the Goblin Copters. Each wave has, I believe, a buff beam, fireball towers. Anyways, it's easy. It's an easy map. It's it's the easiest of, of the four. I know I just said the Ramparts was, but this is, this is way easier. It's so big. It's, there's no enemy spawn. Anyways, done with this map. Um, also, keep in mind, this is a good map for getting early Mythical Waves, since the first wave only has one Ogre and there's only, like, 20 enemies. Super easy to farm. And on to the last map of the campaign, which is the Summit. Now we're going to spend a little bit more time here. The setup here was a little bit sketchy because my auras just weren't big enough. This is more of concern because if enemies come up the side paths instead of going down the stairs on the northwest and east sides, they can just kind of slip through. Which happens a little bit on the early rounds, but it doesn't really matter. And once I have the buff beams down, it didn't matter at all. On the back row behind the crystals, I've also set a bunch of Daily Striker Towers for the Goblin Copters and the boss. These are all set on the buffing, of course. The boss is a little bit worrisome because he can just one-shot you and attack your towers from far away. But luckily, my Daily Striker Towers were able to attack him while he was flying around, which just kind of did a good amount of chip damage. It would have slowly killed him if I were to die. But eventually, I was like, alright, well, I need to do something about this because it's going to take too long. My Daily Striker Towers are going to need to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to lose my crystals. So instead of having to worry about all that, I shot him with the Harpoon. Went up to him with my hero boost activated and my seahorse and basically shred him to pieces. And it was such an easy and beautiful sight to kill the dragon without getting killed that I went on to do Glitterhelm Caverns as my last map of this. So pretty much completed the campaign on Nightmare Hardcore, which is nice because we've unlocked everything. But now let's go over to the bonus map, which is Glitterhelm Caverns. The setup here for Glitterhelm Caverns is similar to our insane mode setup. I had a couple close calls though on this map, mainly due to the ogres on the bottom crystal, or going to the bottom crystal from the middle spawn, or I guess south middle spawn, I don't know what you want to call it. I also had a scare on wave 9 with the goblin copters, pretty much overrunning the center map. This was fixed on wave 10 when I placed a bunch of archers on a line and basically just dealt with all the goblin copters when they came in, which made this totally a lot easier. But yeah, Glitterhelm covers, not much to discuss. It's pretty easy, just make sure you go to where the ogres are. It doesn't actually really matter because I can just have my defenses kill them, but just having myself where the goblin copters spawn. I had archers placed all over the place wherever the goblin copters could spawn. But yeah, so Glitter Helm's done. That means we completed all the original campaign on Nightmare Hardcore. We had the Lost Shards to do and a couple other maps, but we can still far start farming up some of these new maps as well. That said, I think the total play time of this whole campaign on Nightmare Hardcore was like 90 minutes or two hours, which is nice because we kind of just sped through this in a single night, and we were able to get through it all in one video. And if you're expecting a stat check, 
don't worry about it because it's literally the same stats as the start besides a couple of the accessories i probably increased my stats by a minimum of or maximum i should say of like 20 so i've literally picked up nothing so there is no stat check and that is going to be the end of the video i know this is really fast paced hopefully you can keep up but if not oh well it's this this episode is going to be like this because i want to get through all these levels fast they're not interesting and we start going to the interesting stuff which will be happening in the next episode or so but anyways take care guys have a good one